else they say they couldn't possibly have learnt in this life, how can this still be called imagination? Could there be another answer to how Peter Hume acquired his knowledge of the English Civil War? At the turn of the century, hypnotist Theodore Flournoy came up with a term he thought explained these unusual memories, cryptomnesia. Cryptomnesia is literally hidden memory, and it refers to the fact that as we go through our lives, we gain information from books and films, talking to people and so forth. And though we retain the content of that information, we, we frequently uh, forget or lose sight of the source of the information. I had one uh, gentleman by the name of Riley, whom I regressed every week for nearly a year, and every week Mr. Riley had a different kind of past life experience. Uh, he was a Roman soldier, an Indian brave, a little piccaninny uh, on a plantation during the Civil War. He was a soldier in World War II. He was a sailor sometime during the uh, 18th century. We recorded every one of his past life sessions and in every one of them, he would go home and try to find out where this information came from. And usually, without too much searching, he would find himself you know, something he'd read, seen, heard, and so on. He was a history buff. But even if science can find the apparent source of the memories, it is yet to explain claims that past life memories have the power to heal. Writer Carol Bowman has researched children's past life memories, but she also recovered her own memories while suffering a serious illness. When I was in my mid-30s, I had a very long bout of pneumonia and pleurisy, and I could hardly breathe. <coughs> and one afternoon when I was lying in bed trying to sleep, I saw a very clear vision of a man who was lying in bed propped up with pillows, and he looked very ill, he was very pale, and he was coughing. And there was something about this vision that completely overtook me. It felt very real, and as I concentrated on it, it shifted, and I realized on a very deep level that I had been this man before. And then from a perspective Above the treetops, I was looking down at a funeral procession, which I perceived to be his funeral. And I saw carriages and horses. I realized that I had been this man and I had died of consumption. And I felt that somehow I was replaying this illness in my present lifetime. Her experience had a powerful effect. She suddenly began to get better. I believe that bringing past life memories to consciousness does help us heal in some way. Somehow it releases the emotional charge of the memory. And by doing that, I think in some way it alleviates symptoms too. But are we dealing with genuine memories or the power of the imaginative mind? One idea is that memories could be carried within the genetic code in DNA. But there's no gene known to pass on such detailed memories from parent to child, let alone to unrelated people. Although the scientists find it hard to believe there is evidence for previous lives, past life therapist Roger Woolger still claims that taking people back can help them with present day problems. These are experiences that have somehow been blocked out not released, that are sitting in the unconscious mind. And only by reliving them and fully feeling the feelings can the block be unfrozen, as it were. So they come up behind you, and suddenly there's like a... <coughs> That's it, let it, let that very gentle. It might be that you were strangled and couldn't let a cry out. It might be that you were dragged off and uh, shot before you got a chance to express your rage and anger. And when that happens, these feelings get locked in different parts of the energy body. I'm being choked. <gasps> yep, 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 I'll count to three and it'll all be over. One, two, three, it's over. And some scientists who don't believe in past lives 
still think such experiences can be helpful. I think it has great power. We should not necessarily demean it because it doesn't have scientific support. It does have great clinical support if it allows the person to reduce their anxiety, to have productive lives, to love, to be creative. We have to differentiate between the importance of the belief for the person to live and succeed and the scientific fact behind it. I don't know of any uh, valid case of a person being cured of their problem uh, by having used exclusively and only past lives therapy. If it does work, which I am skeptical about, if it does work, I think it's only because of the fact that uh, they're dealing with suppressed emotions and uh, somehow or other able to uncover the kind of problems that the person has in this life. Yet some people insist that genuine past life memories have radically changed their lives. Edward Austrian's family are convinced that his memories of being shot in the First World War healed the growth in his throat. He had a growth that disappeared. He said it would disappear. He said how it would disappear and when. He said there would be no second operation. He had a spiritual and emotional healing. He no longer was fearful of those dank, dark, rainy days. This signifies to me that something very important had gone on here. Past life memories have changed Bruce Whittier's life too. Though brought up a Christian, his memories of dying in the Holocaust have led him to identify with the Jewish faith. I work for a Jewish family in their bagel shop as their bakery manager and I wear the uh, Star of David uh, every day as a symbol to myself that uh, I am a reincarnate Jew from the Holocaust. But still, the scientists have a problem. How can past life memories possibly enter the brain? The way the reincarnationists would view the matter is that the mind at the point of death, or the spirit or the soul, becomes separate from the body and goes to a place of some sort and then later re-enters a child during pregnancy. The problem with this view is that there's no way we can understand how something purely spiritual could make things happen in the neurons of the brain. So there's no mechanism by which a discarnate spirit could enter a brain. This is wishful thinking on the part of everyone. We want to believe that we're immortal. What happens after death is a matter of faith, not fact. People believe what they will, but have no way of knowing. Knowledge can only come from beyond the grave, territory which remains closed to science. Can memories from a dying person float off across space and time to find a new home? Millions of people believe that it happens. Many find hope in the idea of rebirth. But science can only ask questions. It cannot show that those hopes will come true.